hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and guess what we're making today? Ooh, I wonder what it is. <laughs> my very favourite, yes it is, my very favourite cowl at the moment. I love making these. I've made so many. I'm going to be popping a lot of them up on my madeit.com.au store and maybe my Etsy store if it's still open. Those links will be in the details down below if you would like to purchase this then go ahead and do that. Otherwise, stick with us because we're going to make it today. Yay! <laughs> You're thinking, why should I purchase it if I'm going to make it? You may not like crochet or you may like crochet, but you may not like to do it and you would like to purchase this gorgeous cow. If so, um, check out the description box down below and uh, click on madeit.com.au or Etsy and find the cow and order it. In the meantime, if you're going to make it, stick with us. This is not just your normal cowl. This is called a hooded cowl. And the reason I'm doing this is to tuck my hair in there <laughs> at the back because it can be worn like this or it can be worn like this. Pop it down at the back down below like so. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, if I can pull that all the way back down there below. Okay. And there's your hooded cowl. So come your horrible uh, winter months, and possibly the cooler of the September, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say September, that's Melbourne, Australia, the cooler spring month, because, <laughs> um, you know, spring can be quite cool here in Australia. I don't know what it's like fall in certain countries, uh, can be quite cool. So autumn, spring, and definitely winter. Spring, if you want to wear it like this, you've got some cooler days, and you just want to wear it to keep your neck, neck warm, that's great. If you want to double this to make it a wrap around twice cow, then you just need to double what you see in the tutorial. So if we did 102 stitches, I think it might have been 104, 106, I can't remember. You don't need to worry about counting, by the way, in that essence. You do need to start off your chains with about 100 or more, so it can fit around your neck, okay? If you wanted to make it double, just double what we've done in the tutorial and it's easy. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Okay, I used, and this is the best bit, I used my favourite red velvet from Caron Cakes, a red velvet, it's gorgeous colours, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I love, love, love the red velvet. I've made so many things with it. I've also made a, um, a double crochet V-stitch blanket that is here on YouTube. That link will also be in the details down below, using the red velvet yarn. So I have used it for quite a lot of things. Um, the best part is this cowl right here, only took one skein. I did skein, skein, ball of yarn, or wherever the country you come from. I did, however, pinch some brown from another skein, only because I wanted to make the base of the brown the same as, I mean, the top of the brown the same as the base, or base same as the top, doesn't matter whichever way you want to say it. Um, so I took off whatever colour it was there and just added the brown. You don't need to do that. Just pick the one skein and go around and around and around and around and around until you have ended your skein. This is a full skein of yarn, okay? So, I don't know what else to say about it. I used a 5.5 millimeter hook. The actual yarn itself, I believe it sells, if I can read it, uh, a five millimeter hook. I don't know where I put it. It's here somewhere. Keep looking, 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 looking. It does call for a five millimeter hook. I don't know if that's the right way for you. Five millimeter hook. You will need your scissors, and you will need a darning needing needing weaving needle to suit. There are some of the needles that I use. You will need one to suit this yarn because it's quite thick. So choose a needle to suit the yarn. Um, I'm not going to say any more about it. I want you to go ahead and use it. I can use it and make it right now. I'm going to stop. I just want you to see how gorgeous it looks on and how warm and snugly it feels. Okay, so without further ado, <laughs> let's make our cow. Alrighty, will you move all our gear out the way? Okay, and there's our beautiful <laughs> cow. I'm going to move that out the way too. Now, as you saw in the promo, you can use whichever hook size you want to use. Um, it will be either a 5 or a 5.5. Yours truly usually uses the 5.5 in the soft clover touch. However, I've misplaced my 5.5, so I'm very disappointed in my own self, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> so I'm going to be using it in the, um, I can't remember what this one was called. It's still a clover. 
um, but it's the 5.5 and it's kind of a little bit more rubbery, if you will. It's also, um, I find a little bit heavier for me, but that's just me. You might love it as a lot of people do. <clears throat> We will be using our scissors, yes, 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 and this, we will be using our sewing, weaving, darning needle. However, this one here is a little bit yucky for its time. <laughs> it's had its time, so to speak, but I can't find the new one I bought, so I'm going to be using my little old one. So yours truly has misplaced everything lately, and I don't, don't know why. Okay, I've had a lot on my mind with uh, young Teddy coming soon. Yes, well, when I say young Teddy, young Teddy is probably about 11, 10 or 11 years old. We haven't actually got the exact age yet. Okay, um, but he's a fairly old fella. Um, he is a Pomeranian cross, I don't know. <laughs> you like that one Pomeranian cross I don't know that's an interesting dog um so yeah he's a, he's a little tiny thing and he's gorgeous and I can't wait to get a photo to show everyone but in the meantime we're going to get started with our cowl my favorite cowl I'm so so excited what we're going to be doing is remember what we said in the promo we need to know how to do chains we need to know how to crochet in the third loop too easy we're going to do that right now basic 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 and it's going to look gorgeous 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 one of my favorite cows to make so far i know there'll be more but you know, currently that's one of my favorite cows so what we're going to do is yarn over our finger twice hold it there this is a slip knot okay pass your back loop over hold it there pass the other loop all the way over pop your hook in and give it a tug too easy, huh? Too easy. Now, we are going to chain. Uh, there's a lot of people who have asked me um, about uh, chaining a hundred and something stitches and then slip stitching and the rest of it. No, yours truly is not going to do that today. Why? Because I know another way. Okay? <laughs> Very sneaky. Okay, we're going to chain um, one, yarn of a hook, two, yarn of a hook three yarn of a hook four okay easy easy so far five six now um if you're wondering why i'm using a larger hook it's because my crocheting is very very tight so i use a larger hook okay so what i want you to do disappear <laughs> or pause the camera pause the camera pause your video i pause the camera you pause the video uh chain up up to 105 or 106 if you want the size you saw in the promo if you want it to be double so it can go around your neck twice then you chain up obviously 200 and uh, whatever it is 210 212 whatever you want now remember that when you're doubling it you will need two skeins if you're going to use um, just make the normal cowl the size that's in the promo. You'll only need one skein, one skein, or one ball of Caron cakes. Okay, so go ahead, make your 105 stitches or so, 102, and then come back to us. Catch you soon. All right. So yours truly has done her 100 and 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 then and, and how many have I done? 105 or six? I can't remember. It doesn't really matter because it's neither here nor there. Now, um, what you need to do is do a half double crochet in the third loop. Now, you're looking at this thinking, well, there's only two loops here, one and two, you know, there's only two loops. If you turn your work to the back a little, you'll see that. I'll get a nice close-up so you all can see, all right? Sorry about the close-up of my hands too, <laughs> but that's that. So we're saving, um, we're saving, we're skipping two, which is one and, actually, no, we'll put it in that second one. Right there. And we'll turn it towards us. You may or may not see it. Actually, might put it in the third one just for now so I can show you. Whoops, that's not good. Let's try there. There, there's a little loop there, there, there. Okay, I might have come out of frame there, but I'll show you close up. Right there. Okay, hard to see that first one. Yarn of a hook, pull through loop. Yarn of a hook, pull through all three loops on a hook. I'll, see, I'll show you again. You can see it. This is what we're really looking at normally. So we turn it a little bit and see that bump right there? That little bump right there. And there's a thread there. You might be able to see it. You might not. There it is. Whoops. Right there. Okay. So there you go. We'll try it again. I'm not going to leave you in a lurch. We'll just keep doing it until we get it right. <laughs> and so there's your little bump right there. And we're going to put it in there. Don't panic if you don't do this row right. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't get seen anyway. I just like to do it this way because it looks better. And in fact, most of my crocheting when I start a new row is all done through the back bump now. Okay, because um, I think I saw Mikey from, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, oh, gosh, but Mikey, you'll know when you type in Mikey Crochet, he'll come up. He says it does look better that way. And I had a look at it and I tried it and all my crochet does look better in that back bump or the third loop when it comes to the first row. So go ahead, keep going all the way across and yours truly will pause the camera and we will come back to the third row or second row if you will all right so if you look carefully at it, it does give it a, a nicer or neater edge look when you're doing it in the back bump all right back bump third loop when we're crocheting the next round it'll be called the third loop it's not called a back bump it's only in that very first row that you do that you call it a back bump or you can still call it the third loop okay go ahead and do that with all your stitches all the way across and then hold it there and i will show you how to slip stitch to join so you didn't have to worry about um a crooked circle okay i'll meet you up all right here we are at the end of the row it is looking very lovely indeed <laughs> okay so what i want you to do now you've got to your very last stitch i did forget to mention hopefully you did uh leave a little bit of a length of a tail for this part here or for the future part to come if not don't panic weaving it together you can use another thread it doesn't matter because it won't be noticed now we are here okay what we need to do we need to attach that now okay so what we're going to do just have a look at how flat ours is okay mine's a little bit oddly shaped because some of my um, stitches were extremely tight and yours truly <laughs> has struggled to um, get the thread through uh, get the hook through all right so the deal is to leave make sure your crochet piece is straight or flat how you know that it's straight or flat okay when we're slip stitching it together okay your normal stitch should look like a v if you turned it the other way it is a v but it's kind of a tight looking v the top stitch should be a, um, a thin or loose looking v and that should be the front you shouldn't if you did it this way you could tell that's all bubbled that side's not bubbled and that is so you know already that that's the wrong side so what you're looking for is a flat it might help you, I don't know if I can do this, show you in full, to have it that way. Like a football looking thing or, you know, rectangle looking thing. And that way you know exactly where to slip stitch. Okay. Just get rid of that thread, you don't need it for now. So, and where you're slip stitching it to is, all right. Where your stitch slip stitching it to is see that's your first v your second v that's your first v you're slip stitching it into that but we're not exactly going to slip stitch what we're going to do okay is turn it and this is a very tricky section of the whole thing let me show you these are your v's right when you turn it there is a third loop right there let me get another hook to show you there's your normal place where you put your double crochet we're not going to put it there we're half double I should say in our case you're going to put it turn it and put it in there okay and that's a third loop and what it does is it turns your v's towards you all right so you double half double crochet in there and then your next half double crochet goes in there okay not there not these two right here not these two but that one right there tricky to see okay i may and probably will do a, a tutorial with a thicker and lighter stitch in fact I will 
So um, if you want to see that particular stitch being done um, separately from what we're doing now, just click on the link below. It'll be the very last tutorial you see. I've decided it'll only take me a few minutes to do it on a, a lighter colour um, and to show you. So I will do that and pop it in the link down below. However, since we are neither here nor there, <laughs> neither there or here or whatever you want to call it, we are going to start and we are going to put the thread over the loop, like over the hook, like you normally would to get ready for a half double. Hold it there, grab your other side, okay? And there's your first V right there. We're not going to put it in there. We're going to turn it and find that third loop right there. Now it's, it's awkward, it's fiddly, it's only this first stitch that's fiddly. The rest should come easy. Yarn over hook, pull through all three loops on your hook. Again, very fiddly. Don't panic and don't move it, otherwise you will move it out of place. So you're going to do the same, half double crochet in the next. And now that you've done it once, the rest of the work kind of faces you anyway, so you find that third loop. Okay, once you do it, and that next row that we do is going to be super easy. And then yarn over hook, pull through the loops. Okay, we're going to do the same. The third loop is right there. There's your two loops. Turn it and your third loop is there. All right, easy so far. I, I, I keep saying easy, but it's, it's a tricky stitch, but you'll get it. Again, I will post um, a link to um, a lighter color so you can see. I just wanted to do this one for the cowl to give you the same look as the cowl that I already have, okay? So, but it is quite easy, half double in that third loop. And you can start to see it now. It is automatically facing you, that third loop. Oops, I've got a bit of a tight stitch there. Right there. Now I've just skipped a stitch. Oh, dearie me. And this one is a really tight stitch in here. I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I managed it, but it's there. Okay. It almost looks like a single crochet, and it possibly is. But it doesn't matter. It got through there and there. All right, so I'll show you again, nice and close. Turn. There's your two. There's your V. You're turning it towards you, and there's a back bump right there. You're popping your hook in there. All right, let me show you what it looks like close up. Right now, this is what you're looking at. So you're not looking at the pattern. It started there, but you won't see it until after the third or second row. Okay, so if you look at that there, you can see that start to see the pattern. All right, and almost start to see it there. It's almost happening. So what I want you to do, keep going all the way across, like so. Okay. And I shall meet you up at the end of this row. Now, how you know when you come to the end of the row, because you don't need a stitch marker right now, is you will come to that section there anyway. All right. So you'll come to right there and you'll know it. All right. And I shall meet you there. Okay, so this is where you should be at this section, right here. All right, just be careful and make sure your circle is flat, okay, or your uh, cowl, if you, if you will, is flat. Now, you've got that little tail end still dangling. I hope you've left a nice long tail. If not, don't panic. You can always use another thread to sew in there, okay? So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, hopefully yours wasn't as difficult as mine because mine was extremely tight. However, I've noticed I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit loose now with the edging, which is a very good thing. So let's get a close-up. I think I have one more stitch to go. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, I do. Okay, so it's yarn over hook. Let's get a nice close-up for you. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put that one in there. Right, and we might actually, because it's kind of um, slip stitched across. Oh, I'll just have a quick look before I do anything, guys. Yeah, no, there's nothing there at all. No. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to jump over. We're not going to be slip stitching or anything. We're going to be putting our last stitch in there, where your 
third loop is, which is quite tricky now because it's a little bit tight there. That's our last stitch in there. All right, that's where you're up to. Now, this looks like a stitch, but it isn't. It was a jump over and it was a little bit loose on my part, so that's that. Don't panic too much. We're just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to jump over to the next one, find the back of the loop. You're not sure, just face it towards you, and there it is. So this is your V right there. And there's your back loop right there where my fingernail is right there. So take it out. Get your V and turn it towards you. And you can see that back loop right there. And there you go. So all you've done, no slip stitching, you've just jumped over. All right. And you're just going to keep going into the back loops all the way across. Now, while we are going, I'm going to keep going for a little bit because I want to show you quite a bit um, when we get through. Just keep going to that third loop. Again, if you're not sure, automatically the, the piece starts to tilt anyway. So you can actually just pop your hook in that third loop. There you go. Tilts a little bit and you can see it right there. Okay. Again, if you're not sure, just pop back to that um, previous tutorial on the lighter color. I can't remember what color I used because I stopped this tutorial and did it and then came back and then forgot all about it. But it took a couple of days <laughs> to do all that. So I can't remember. But um, it doesn't matter. It's there. The tutorial is just before this one. Have a practice. Come back to us and finish off your cowl. Okay. Now, before we finish, let's have a quick look. And you can actually start to see the pattern. Okay. Let's have a look at the main piece right there. See? You can see the pattern. That's kind of upside down at the moment. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, yes, it is. It's kind of upside down at the moment so if i turn it the other way it's supposed to look like that right there okay see already you're starting to get that look we love 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 this pattern well i do anyway i hope you love it as i do so what i want you to do oh i picked up a five instead of my 5.5 almost did that almost made a terrible mistake okay all right i've got all my hooks near me i've got my fives i've got my 4.5 I've got them all near me and I usually just pick up one for each project and then work on that okay so what I want you to do keep doing your half doubles in that third loop or if you're struggling go to the practice tutorial which is the one just before this practice and then come back and then keep doing your half doubles in your third loop and I will meet you when we come to that next round and that is when we will mess around with that little opening okay a lot of people um they do the chains and then they slip stitch with the chains and they go round and round and round and round and round and it's easier but i find this a lot easier only because it stops me from um twisting the chains and a lot of people can there are tips on how to not twist chains i might even do a tip on that soon on how to not twist your chain but this is personally the way i like to do these cowls now, this also works with normal half double crochets or half double crochets in the back loop and not the third. So this works like that. So what I want you to do, my darlings, is keep going all the way around, um, come back to here, and then we will work on this little opening, which is looking rather loose. Okay, so keep going and I'll meet you up. All right, we've gotten to the end of this row here. How we know it's the end is because we have that little gap space right there. So we're going to do is keep going over that gap space. So go in your third loop, pretending like there is no space, and your third loop again, and your third loop again, and your third loop again, and so on and so forth, and etc. 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 So at this stage, this is what you have. Let's get a nice close-up. You have that. It looks broken, it looks ripped, it looks torn, it looks ugly. So now we are going to fix it up. Or, in fact, I might wait till the end of the tutorial and I will show you how to fix that up. It pays to leave it there for now so you can see where your row starts and ends. It doesn't really matter because now it's all in one way. When we get to the end of the cowl, which will be 
So where I can, oh, I can find it. Where's the end? Is this the end? Or oh, that's the bottom. This is the end. Okay, so I'm going to get to the end. Oh, sorry about that. I'm going to get to the end of the cow. I can't find the end to the top, to the bottom. It will have like a ridge like that. Now, what we did, what I did, not you, but you're going to, is keep doing your half doubles in your third loop till you get to halfway, just before the end there. Okay, so you get there and you're doing, I'll, I'll show you at the end of this anyway. You will do half double your third loop, single in your third loop, single in your third loop, slip stitch in your third loop, slip stitch in your third loop, pull the thread through, weave it in, and you get like a gentle, a very gentle dip. So you can't see it. When you're putting your cowl together like this, over your neck, you can't see a rise and fall anywhere. And it looks <clears throat> simply superb on both sides on any sides you want to put it that way or that way there is no right or way wrong way of wearing it it is a fabulous cow okay so we are going to yours truly and i and you and me sorry me and you you and i us we all of us <laughs> shut up mary <laughs> okay we're going to keep going in our half doubles in the back loop <clears throat> over and over and over and over and you guess it over again until we get to there's our thread until we get to the last row and we might have a little bit of thread left i think i used um an extra bit of brown that i had left over for that last row you don't need to just get to the very last row make sure you got quite a bit of thread left over so you can weave in an end okay but what we'll do we'll just keep going okay so your best bid now is to pause the video, spend a couple of days fixing up, fixing up, what am I saying, um, doing rows upon rows if you are new, spend a few hours doing rows upon rows if you are intermediate, spend the next hour or so <laughs> doing rows upon rows if you are a professional. <laughs> so this you will actually fly through, it is a basic stitch. Oh. Don't lose it like that, like I just did. It is a basic stitch. It is quick. It is easy. And it's round and round and round and round and round. And if you get bored, put it down. Have a play with something else, preferably one of our granny squares that you are needed for our blanket. Oh, and if you aren't doing the uh, granny square blanket and you would like to do the granny square blanket, <clears throat> the links to that first granny square will be in the description box down below. Um, so, yeah. If you get bored of doing this over and over and over again, um, stop doing it and do one of our squares and uh, come back to it whenever you want. I find things like this, and I I know I shouldn't, I call them what I, and it's not nice, but I do call them the dodo project or the dumb project. Um, it's a project you do when you are sitting in a train on the way to work or sitting in a bus on the way to a shopping center or someone is driving and you are in the car and you're bored these are the kind of projects you pick up where you can watch television as well and work because you can see the back loops if you are a professional if you are new and you want to focus then by all means <laughs> don't do anything like that do it in a nice quiet room where you can focus so what i want you to do is go round and round and round and round and round until you get to the close to the end of your yarn and I shall meet you up for the final row we are going to be so happy when it is done go for it and I'll meet you up all right guys just quickly I sorry I forgot to mention I would actually like to weave in this end first the only reason I'm finding it really annoying as I go in my rounds, that's the only reason why. You will need your stitch marker for this bit, okay? You won't need it right now, but you will need it, okay? You grab your darning, weaving, sewing needle. I'll just, just snip the end because it's a little bit frayed from tossing it around a little bit. That's another reason why I wanted to sew it in. There was a lot of reasons, but one of them was it's actually annoying. Every time I went in the round, I... Um, I got it tangled around my finger, <laughs> around my fingers. Okay, you can darn your needles any way you like, my darlings, my dears, my pets, my angels, my sweets, and all those lovely words I can't be bothered thinking about right now. Okay, so your right side will be 
Mm, where is it? Okay, there it is. Your right side is with those beautiful edges facing you. Okay, those beautiful lines facing you. It doesn't really matter. Okay, in this case, just give it a bit of a tug so I can pull it out a little bit. And there you go. You should have it like that. It actually looks like it's ripped, but it's not. Okay, so what we're going to do, it's a very fiddly, fiddly way of doing this. So I am slowly, very gently going to weave in and out of the end here upwards towards the gap the very first gap that you see that big space right there okay so weave it in very gently don't pull too tight because you want to be able to line that up with that later okay if you haven't left yourself a long enough tail don't panic go and find a thread similar color or as close to it as you can get nobody will notice weave it back in up to and through there like that Yes, I'm weaving it in the front. I know it looks a bit funny, but it doesn't matter. It's just for now. Now, I would just pop the thread through to the back, anywhere in the back you like, as long as you can get it through the back. Turn it over, and there you go. You've still got your thread attached, and you've got that hole there, and then the bottom bit. All right. So what I want you to do is to pretend that you're going to be weaving in the ends whip stitch way, or whichever state set of state whichever way you want so there get the other side doesn't matter where you get it okay gently give it a tug already it's slowly closing up as we speak there okay there we go so grab the other side now this is where it may come across a little bit short on one side and longer on the other you need to play with it so you pull it through there, see this one, to make it shorter, pull it through the whole lot right there. All right, now this one is still shorter, so you find a small bit that you want to get. Right, this one is longer, so you grab a lot more. Go through the shorter bit right there, whoops, anywhere you like. Nice thick section. It's getting a bit tight now because we're at the bottom. And then back through the other side, right there. Whoops, grab some more thread though. <laughs> right there. And there you go. Little bit bubbly. Don't panic. We are now going to go back the other way to even it all out. Just weaving in through the ends there now mine's a little bit thick because i'm using the needle i'm using is too thick for this <laughs> thread so i probably shouldn't have used it but it's okay it's only because i can't find my other one my new one that i bought and i'm very disappointed with myself okay so go back the other way if you're worried you can go up and down that section you just did a few more times it's never going to come undone but if you're worried you can do that and if you want, one more time, again, you don't need to. I'm doing it just for fun. Oh, see how tight that is? Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm going to cut that end. Now, pop it through and let's have a quick look at it. Oh, dearie me, I should have, before I cut it, <laughs> before you cut it, you should have put that little stitch marker there. It doesn't matter where you put it. As long that's really where the start is right there with that little bump right there you can see it it's very minimal and that's our front whoops that's our front anyway so it's a very tiny little bubble you can't notice it and when oh I've, I've got rid of my other one and when you have a look at the original there's your original with all the threads hanging off it sorry you can't see it it's very very difficult to see okay Beautiful. Not noticeable at all. All right. So continue with your pattern. And uh, well, you're saying continue with your pattern. Continue with your pattern. All the way around like so. Keep going. And when you get to your stitch marker, you just keep going around and around and around and around until you fall asleep. <laughs> but don't fall asleep because we have to finish the end of this. <laughs> so I'll catch you right at the very end of the tutorial.
All right, so here we are close to the end of the round, as you can tell. If you fold that over and pop it there, you will see you only have about, let's have a close-up look, probably one, two, three, four, five, roughly, whatever you have, four stitches, five stitches, it doesn't matter, preferably six, it might help you out a lot. Now, yours truly realised that towards the end of this, yeah, I'm playing yarn chicken, so it goes from brown and then it goes straight into your red. And I don't want to restart the red. It's leftover red. Might only make another round or so. Um, it's like a last bit of thread on the skein. So I don't really want to use it considering I wanted to keep it in sync. Oh, let's blow that out of it. In sync with the rest of the pattern. Okay. If I start a red, I'm going to have to do a couple more rows of red. Open up another skein and I don't want to do that. So... <clears throat> excuse me so instead of using my 5.5 for the last <laughs> 10 stitches I used a 5 only so that I can tighten it up you can't tell the difference okay it's only a tiny little bit of a dip and that was just a little trick that I've learnt when I get a little bit desperate with yarn chicken okay now uh, if you want to know where the end is remember what we did before we put a stitch marker there so you bring it all the way over here and you know, and now are officially at the end of your round. It doesn't really matter because it's all the same all the way around, so it doesn't matter. However, roughly that's where we are. So I'm looking at about another six stitches. So what I want to do now, because if I leave it like this and do my half double crochets and end there, you're going to have that big dip there. So we want to even it out. So what we're going to do, we've done our last half double there. Whoops, sorry. We're going to do a single crochet in that third loop only. And there's your single. As you can see, I did play with the stitches before <laughs> and realized I didn't have enough brown to do another round. So it doesn't matter. Didn't really need another round. You can end it wherever you like. If you want to do the extra couple of rows of red too, that's fine. So you slip stitch in there. Um, sorry, not slip stitch. I do apologize. We did one single crochet. You're going to do another single crochet. And one more, just for fun. So you've done three single crochets. Now you're going to do three slip stitches. Again, it doesn't matter if you go over the mark where it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter. And there's your three slip stitches. All right, so that's where you are. Let's pull it up so I can show you. So there's your, um, your half doubles. We stop there. Then we did our singles and we did our slip stitches. When we're ready to weave in the end, you will hardly notice that you did a drop. Okay, let's have a look to see if it's there almost. And it is. I might do another slip stitch just for fun. You don't need to. It's fine. It's okay the way it is. But I will pull a loop through, give it a cut and look at that. Right there is where the red kicks in. So... Talk about yarn chicken for what? <laughs> All right. So now what you have is one fully, fully a ground um, cow. And now what we're going to do is push all the threads, everything out the way. We're going to weave in that very last end. And what we'll do is we'll weave it in so we won't notice that it drops down like that. Isn't this great? We are at the end of our tutorial well, almost. Okay, so let's turn it inside out. So you know that's inside out because it's a little bit bubbly. However, some people might like that look and you might want to wear it that way rather than that way. But I love this look. This is gorgeous, all right? All right, so this is the inside out. This is the right side. This is your wrong side. So you can do it any way you like, all right? Whichever way, I'm sorry, I usually do work this way. I'm trying to do it easier for you. But I work this way. So what I do with the, the wrong side is I pick up a thread anywhere. Remember, if this is not finished and you're not happy with it, don't do this bit. Because once you start splitting yarn like that, um, you won't be able to fix this up. <laughs> you won't be able to take it undone. And I know that from experience because I ended up doing two rows of brown with this one. And I wasn't happy with it. I wanted more rows, so I cut it. Um, and got a brown from the other side of the skein and used that, which is 
um, on the other side of my new skein, sorry, use that, which is the reason why I ended up with red. So we're going to pull that loop through right there, gentle tug, and it's gone. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's gone, okay? But we're not finished yet. You don't want to leave it like that because that's, you know, might come undone. We don't want that. So we are going to weave in any way you like. I usually go down with this. And just weave in, splitting the thread like that. Check the front. If you can see your needle, don't go on. Take it undone and start again. But I can't, so everything's fine. I'll pull it through. Give it a gentle tug. And you see you've lost that lump at the back. All right? So you can't see the lump. It's gone down. Now, um, I still want to go a bit further down. I don't think it's long enough me being fussy and a stickler and everything check the other side you can't see it pull it through and that part is done you're not finished yet you're going to go back the other way because you don't want it to unravel so you go back the other way finding different sections to go through so you don't have to go all the way just go there so you're not seeing it from there have a look can't see it no at all pull your thread through and there you go. Now, guess what? One more time. I always do a third time. And so I just find a different section to put it in. Splitting the threads like that. Turn it around. Can't see it. Beautiful. And there you go. There is no way that's coming undone. I can't believe I did yarn chicken with that. Well, it wasn't complete yarn chicken. I did steal some from another, <laughs> from another um, scheme. Okay. So there you go. Now let me show you what it looks like. Okay, very gradual drop. You can't even notice it. And when you do that, I don't know if I can get it all in, I can't. I'll have to raise it up in a minute. When you do that, I've got my hair in there already. <laughs> it's a good thing I wash my products afterwards. When you do that, let me get this off so you can see. Oop, get rid of that. And there you go. And there you go. And there's your cow. How gorgeous is this cow? You, my darlings, just completed your very first crochet cow with Wow Crochet. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I hope you like the tutorial. If you do like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to receive further tutorials, click that little bell button and you'll get further tutorials in the future. So, um, yeah, good luck with your cow. And don't forget, you can show me your cow on Facebook. Um, and if you want to leave any messages, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Also, if you're worried about leaving messages in the comment section, you're a bit shy, you can post me your messages with the post office box that is also in the links down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. And guess what, people? Ciao for now.